So let us begin. And um, before we start, let us talk and discuss what we did in the last class. So we talked about in the last class what is the post good issue, and we discussed that <clears throat> post good issue is a important transaction because post good issue has the integration of sales, inventory management, and the finance integration. In that, we did a whole end to end exercise, and then we verified that how the integration with the inventory happens, and how does the integration with the finance takes place. Then the next exercise which we did in the last class was related to picking exercise. So in the picking with the warehouse management with the collective processing, that was another exercise which we did in the last class. So that was the second exercise which we did. So after that, we have started our discussion on the shipment. Now, shipment is a function of transportation planning. So, shipment is a document which is used for the purpose of transportation planning. We started that discussion last week. We are recapping. So delivery document is the basis for shipping functions like picking, packing. And then we have the shipment document. And this shipment document is the basis for creating and performing transportation functions. In SAP, we can have a outbound shipment where the material is going out. And then we can have inbound shipment when the material is coming in, for example, from the vendor. So outbound shipment is an example when we are sending the material to the customer. So that is material going out. So we have outbound shipment. So if we go back here, in the logistics, at a part of logistic execution. If you go to part of logistic execution, here we have a transportation and transportation planning. And here we have a <coughs> shipment document, VT01N. If I double click on it, and then we have a different shipment type, you know, inbound shipment. We have a Material coming in, so that is example of our inbound shipment. You know. And then if you see there, <clears throat> there's a lot of different document types are here. Okay. So they are different shipment types. Shipment type is like a delivery type, it's a document type. Outbound. Inbound. Okay. Now, apart from outbound or inbound, so we talked. We talked about in the last class that what is the purpose of the transportation. We are talking about transportation. So here we have a transportation and transportation planning. So as a part of transportation, what does the transportation do? So transportation is a function which is basically being used for the purpose of transporting the goods. Okay. 
So that is the purpose of the transportation component, where you can do transportation planning, processing. You can also calculate the freight, so how the freight calculation happens, how the freight settlement happens. Then calculation of the customer fare, settlement of customer, choice of the service provider, which basically means, um, uh, you know, who is the service provider. So we can do the service provider means who is a carrier, which is a trucking company. So that is the basically meaning of the, uh, you know, service provider is. You can also do tracing and monitoring of the shipment process. Okay. And then we can do management of the shipment costs. So that is what we do all do as a part of transportation function. We can create a shipment document. There is a shipment document. We talked about that. So there is a shipment document. We're gonna do this exercise. We're gonna create shipment document today. There is also a separate document that is called shipment cost document. Shipment cost document can be used to calculate the freight. This is the shipment cost document. We are zero one. So shipment document for the purpose of transportation planning. And the shipment cost document is the purpose of shipment cost document. So these are the two different documents. Okay. This is shipment cost document. Shipment cost document. Shipment cost document is used to calculate the shipment costs. How much is the freight? So make a note of, or take the pen and paper, and I would like you guys to make a note of these two blood points which I highlighted what the shipment document is a central document to use to do the shipment. Now, do not intermix shipping and shipment. Shipping is different. If there's a delivery, shipment is different. What now we are talking is shipment. Sometimes we will use shipping or shipment interchangeably. You cannot do that in SAP. In SAP, shipping is about delivery process. Shipment is for transportation process. So there are two different terms. And then we have to use both of them and we cannot use both of them interchangeably so make a note of both In the shipment, you can have a means of transport. Means of transport basically means you're gonna use truck, trailer, with the service provider, with the carrier, what date, what route, all that you do as a part of shipment document. We talked about that last class as well. Then another thing which we have here is something called combining outbound deliveries to form outbound shipment. Okay, make a note of that term. Make a note of that term. Combining outbound deliveries to form outbound shipment. Now, what does that basically mean? That basically means that we can have a many, many deliveries. Because in the real time, real world, you can have, and we have many, many deliveries. And because we have many deliveries, then those deliveries can be combined to make and form outbound shipment. You can assign service agent. You can assign mode of transport. And we can assign shipment type, etc. So all those different things 
we can assign. Okay. That is what this basically means. Okay. Make a note of both bullet points. structure of the ship we're talking about. We talked about that in the last class as well. The shipment document has a predefined structure. There's header, there's item. This concept of header and item continues in almost all documents. We saw that in sales order. We saw that in delivery. And now we are seeing that in shipment document as well. So here we have a structure. A structure, how do we hold this structure? So the first is header. In header, you can have a multiple deliveries, delivery one, delivery two, delivery three, delivery four. You can have many, many deliveries in the each of the line item. So each delivery become the line item of a shipment document. Idea of the shipment document is to combine multiple deliveries. So make a note of the last bullet point which I highlighted. What is the one of the purpose? Shipment, you can, if needed, combine, group, multiple deliveries together. Why will you do that? So let's say if I'm sending the material and it's going to Chicago in the same city, you might combine all those deliveries into one truck. So that way you can do your better freight planning and better freight management and better shipment planning because if you have these five deliveries going to the Chicago, you can combine them into one. So the combining or combination of the multiple deliveries into one shipment document is one of the primary purpose so you can group them. So by grouping multiple outbound deliveries, into single document and then assigning a single truck. So I can put the five deliveries into one truck. That way I may optimize my shipment cost. So one of the primary purpose of the shipment document is to combine multiple deliveries into one document. Okay. That is what it basically means. Okay, so make a note of that a structure in combination. We talked about something called transportation planning point. We looked at it last time also. Transportation planning point is the organization unit which is responsible for doing transportation planning and control. So if you go back here, NVT01N, we can have transportation planning point here. We can have it. Transportation planning point. Transportation planning point is used is organized unit which is responsible for doing the transportation function. We talk about shipping point. Shipping point is the organized unit who does the ship shipping function, creation or delivery. Transportation planning point is responsible for shipment function, transportation function. And we create shipment document 
by a transportation planning point. The shipping point, separate. Transportation planning point, separate. We cannot mix them. So here we are talking about transportation planning point. Transportation planning point is organization unit. You can assign this organization unit. You can create a new transportation planning point and you assign the transportation planning point to the company code. Okay. Where it is, if you go to SPRO, in the configuration, it's defined in configuration, we go to SAP reference IMG, we go to enterprise structure, and we go to definition, logistic execution, and here we have a maintain transportation planning point. If you go back here, that is where you can define transportation planning point. So, and then you assign this transportation planning point to company code. So transportation planning point is directly assigned at a company code level. Okay? So it is already assigned at a company code level. That is what you see here. The transportation planning point and you assign to company code. Now, there's another thing here, that is the sales order. So when we create a sales order, in the sales order itself, there is a lot of uh, information which is relevant for transportation planner. So for example, I'm creating a sales order, okay? So I create a sales order, A01. Okay, hit enter. <laughs> this is a regular sales order. So we, this is a regular sales order. So we enter the customer. It's a regular sales order. We enter the material. Enter the quantity. And uh, it's a regular sales order which we have done many, many times. So here what we are saying, in the sales order, there is a shipping tab. If you go to sales order line item, if I double click here, there is a shipping tab. And in this shipping tab, we have a lot of information which is used for transportation. You have a plant, you have a shipping point, right? you have a means of transport here. The means of transport, you can define how you're gonna transport this material, the means of transport. What route it is going to be. And if I go to header, you have a lot of information in the shipping tab as a header also where you have a shipping condition, means of transportation type, all that information you mentioned is here in the cell phone. A special processing indicator, a special processing indicator, shipping type, shipping type. So how are we gonna ship the material? It is going by the road, 
is going with the truck, it is going with ship, shipping type. And this is in sales order. That is what we see here. Means of transport type. Means of transport type. Means of transport. Means of transport. Now, if you see the means of transport, basically means what vehicle type you're going to use. You know, so there could be multiple vehicles. If I'm sending a truck, am I sending a 20 ton truck or I'm sending a 40 ton truck? I'm going to send the is a vehicle type, is it a small truck or is large truck? What kind of truck it is? Is a bulk container? Then we have a means of transportation type. That basically means I'm going to use truck. So that is a one type. I'm going to use container. That is another type. I'm going to use ship, another type. But within the truck, I can have a type of truck. 20 ton truck, 40 ton truck, 36 ton truck, etc. Then you have a shipping type which we talked about, are we going to use road? Are we going to use rail? Are we going to use ship? Uh, see, what is the shipping type? So I'm going to use road. I'm going to use truck. And I'm going to use a small truck. Or I'm going to use road. I'm going to use truck. I'm going to use large truck. I'm going to use road. I'm going to use container. I'm going to use large container. And we have a special processing indicator. A special processing indicator means, is it express delivery, regular delivery? What kind of delivery it is? This is the flow diagram. Sales order, we have done many, many times. Delivery, we have done many, many times. We have done picking, packing also multiple times. After that, we have this document called shipment creation. The shipment creation is a document, the red color, that we have not done yet. Now, this is the document type which can be created with the help of the transaction code VT01N. That we have not done. This we're going to do. Then we can do good issue. Good issue we have done. Billing, billing also we have done several times. So in this whole end-to-end -end cycle, all the different steps and transactions we have done, except shipment creation. That also we're going to do. Then there is a shipment type. So let me create the sales order. So outbound. Shipment processing. For that, the first thing we do create sales order. That is the first step. So we create a sales order. Sales order we already created the same way we created many many times. The sales order transaction code VA01. Okay. After creating sales order, next thing is we create. Delivery. Delivery the same way. We have done many, many times. We have zero one n. We have we save sales order. We save it. Okay, sales order has been set. We make a note of the sales order. Okay. Now we are talking about here, there's some means called shipment type. Shipment type, make a note of this paragraph which I highlighted. Shipment type is a document type. 
ना जो डिलीवरी टाइप ना जो सेल्स ऑर्डर टाइप कोटेशन टाइप सेम टाइम सेम वे शिपमेंट टाइप इज डॉक्यूमेंट टाइप फॉर क्रिएटिंग शिपमेंट डॉक्यूमेंट शिपमेंट टाइप कंटेन डिफरेंट इंफॉर्मेशन लाइक कंट्रोल नंबर रेंज राउट डिटर्मिनेशन लेग इंटीग्रेटेड डिटर्मिनेशन ऑल दैट इज कंट्रोल बाय दिस डॉक्यूमेंट व्हिच इज कॉल्ड शिपमेंट टाइप सो मेक अ नोट ऑफ दैट shipment type so shipment type is a document type okay are there are different type of shipment type now these are some of the example of the shipment type shipment by truck from the plant to the customer so i'm sending the material from our plant to a customer so this is my plant i'm sending the material to a to the customer so that is sending the material from the plant to the customer that is example of an outbound shipment so that is example of outbound shipment okay. and there is another example i'm sending the material to several plant i might have many plants ready customers so i'm sending the material from a plant to several customer that also we can do okay. then this example this is outbound this is outbound this is inbound i have a material coming from the vendor to my plant this is my vendor and from vendor material coming to my plant this is inbound shipment i have empty return empty return basically means many times when we send the material to the customer customer return returns to me the empty pallets or empty boxes or empty packaging item so that is an example of a empty returns so that is what we can define here empty returns you can have another example where you have several plants and then we are going to several customer So plant one, plant two, they got to the New York. From New York, they go to Chicago, and from Chicago, they go to all the different customers. Customer A, customer B, customer C. So all those different shipment scenarios are possible: inbound, outbound, one customer, multiple customer, one location to multiple location, and so on and so forth. Now we can have. two important thing one is called shipment type one of them is called individual shipment make a note of that individual shipment now here we have something called collective shipment now what is individual make a note individual shipment basically means when you have one point of departure and one point of destination i'm sending for my plant to one customer that is example of individual shipment make a note of that individual shipment one customer one plant to one customer one plant to one customer collective means i have a one plant i'm sending to multiple customers that is called collective shipment so individual shipment and then we have a collective shipment we can individual shipment and then we can have a collective shipment now there is another thing here i would like you this is configuration whether what this have to do? uh okay and yeah okay so we see here whether a shipment can be created or not is determined by these three configuration this is called transportation relevant so whether that delivery is relevant for transportation or not that is controlled by some configuration element now what are those configuration element so the configuration element so are the delivery document type you have to make a transportation relevant 
item category you have to make a transport is relevant in the route you have to make a transportation relevant that at three places there is a transportation relevant which is there now where is this this is in configuration so we are talking about transportation relevance now where it is so for that you go to configuration you go to spro if you go to spro if you go to logistic execution and here we have a transportation and here we have maintain transportation relevance you can note this menu part maintain transportation relevance So we go there. Maintain transportation relevant. Now, what is this here? There are three things: deal document type, item category, the route. Delivery type, item category, and the route. There are three things which has to be check mark for transportation. So we go to delivery type. We double click on it. So here, my delivery document type is LF. So delivery document type LF, we can have a transportation relevance button check box on here. We can have a check box called transportation relevant point. That is where we have here. Second is the delivery item category. So that check box is on, so it's good. Then we go to, we go back, and then we have a item type. We double click on it. and then we have item category item category tn this is item category tn and this is check box here so that basically means that item category is relevant for transportation plan in check box third is route so if we go back here so there is a different routes so as a route also there should be check box so route there is a check box if this route has a check box is relevant for uh, uh, delivery if not then is not relevant so these are the three check boxes okay now what are the options of creating um, ship and docking you can create manually automatically or you can create see that here tps these pp means trans external transportation planning system so we go back here if i exit out from here so we have a single document vt01n your collective processing okay in the collective processing we can have a vt04 and then we can have a vt0 7 vt01n vt04 vt07 okay so we can have these three transactions vt01n single document vt04 collected document vt07 in the background we have three choices so vt01n is the transaction code for single processing then we have a collective processing which is vt04 and if we do want to do collective processing in foreground then vt04 if i want to collective processing in background then it will be the same so vt01n manual single processing collective processing in bed foreground and collective processing in the background three transaction code vt01n vt04 vt07 it is what we see here there is what we see here vt01n vt04 vt07 okay we going to do these transaction we going to do the exercise also in which we going to create a shipment document also
Now this is how it look like. Now what is this basically mean? So for example, we create a sales order. Now let me create a delivery. Delivery same way as we created many many times. So we go to VL zero one n, and then we go to shipment uh, shipping point one thousand, and we hit enter. Go back. You have to put the date in the future. Hit enter. So now we are getting delivery. Now here we can do picking. This is the picking here. we can uh, deliver quantity and then we can have a pick quantity so we done the picking picking is status c okay now after that we can have here transportation so in the transportation what we have okay so the transportation so if we see that here transportation planning status in blank not relevant look at it here not relevant transportation why because route field is empty if a route has to be there so we select the route from the drop down so we select for example whatever 0003 we hit enter and the moment we put the route and we hit enter we get this status a Status A basically means for this delivery we can do transportation planning. This status A is needed. Without that status, we cannot do transportation planning. And then we save it. And then we save it. So delivery has been created. We go to display. and then we create a delivery document okay. now i want to create i want to create okay. create shipment document it is zero one n Okay, so that is VT zero one n. And here, I want to go to V. We close this, and uh, we go to VT zero one n. I select my transportation planning point. Select my shipment type. And then here we have select delivery. So what kind of deliveries we want? then we can select the deliveries and we can choose any delivery as we want and then here we have so many selection parameters by all these different parameters we can select these deliveries and then we have outbound delivery we enter the outbound delivery we hit enter now i just select the one delivery which i created we can select many also that is what this button comes up so this is to select the deliveries okay. then we go into the delivery 
we come back here we have delivery and then we go to uh, overview so this is overview that is what you see here different uh, stages have we done the planning so this is the planning have we done check in have we start the loading and the loading end have we done the shipment completion and then when you put a shipment completion you can also select who is your trucking company or forwarding agent So we can select MD trucking or whatever external agent, small truck. Shipment okay. start, shipment end. These are all different stages you can track. So that is where we have shipment processing exercise. And then after this, we can save it. As you see here, you want to assign the name of the name of the truck driver one, truck driver two. Who is the tractor? Who is the trailer? You can assign all of them. The shipment document has been saved. We create a shipment document. We learn to create a shipment document. And if you see the document flow. We can check document flow. So now here we have standard order completed, delivery in processes, shipment completed. Okay. Hit enter. Now here. This is your shipment document completed. So that is how we can create a shipment document. Now let us say if I want to create a, so this was an example of an outbound shipment here. Yeah? So let us say we want to create an inbound shipment. So how can we do? inbound shipment so this was outbound shipment with the material going out inbound shipment when you are material coming in so in outbound you create a sales order in inbound you create a purchase order but if you create a purchase order then there's a prerequisite so we need to have a vendor master and we need to have purchasing material okay. so vendor master you can do with a transaction code xk01 xk01 and the material master mm01 then after purchase order you can also create inbound delivery yeah so we created the uh, outbound delivery and you can create inbound delivery also. So the de delivery is in both methods. You can do material going out, that is outbound delivery, and then outbound shipment. So here, this was outbound delivery. Now we're talking the inbound delivery. The transaction code for that is, make a note, VL31N.
okay in more delivery and then we create create inbound shipment document this was outbound shipment because this was in case of customer this is we are doing inbound shipment first Purchase order transition code is ME21M. So this was outbound shipment. This is inbound shipment. We want to create a purchase order, but before we do purchase order, we need to create a vendor. Transition code XK01. So for all this, we have to go to the MM module. So now we go to the MM module, the so materials management module. In MM module, then we go to purchasing and uh, we go to master data, vendor, central, create, XK01. So we go to XK01, we want to create a vendor. We can use company code 1000, purchase organization 1000, and then uh, okay. so that is what we can create. account group LIF, so like a customer account group, similarly there is a vendor account group. Hit enter. Now here my vendor is Office Depot. My vendor is Office Depot, we are buying the material from Office Depot. We put a search term here. For the street, address, hit enter, hit enter, hit enter, hit enter. We put a reconciliation account. So like we put a reconciliation account in customer, then we put a reconciliation account in the vendor, which is 1600. Then we put a cash management group. And here we can put a cash management group A1, hit enter. We put, uh, we take in a payment term, any payment term, like has been selecting, hit enter, hit enter. We put an order currency, payment term, in quote term, if there is a minimum order value <coughs> with the salesperson, what is the number, hit enter. Hit enter, hit save. Now we are learned, we just created a vendor. We just learned how to create a simple vendor. We make a note of it. Why we create a vendor? So we can create a purchase order. Without that, we cannot do. We create a vendor. So this is our vendor. Now, in order for us to create a purchase order, I all we also need to have a Purchasing material. Okay. We also need to have a purchasing material. Okay. So we can have a purchasing material as well. So we go back and then we can have a purchasing material. So for that, we close that. And then uh, we go to Material Master, Material. This is Material Master, the same transaction code, M01. Transaction code is same. Only difference is that we are creating this material from the purchasing perspective. We have been creating on sales perspective. Then we select Material Type. 
raw material. The raw material is normally you probably burn. So far, we have been selecting material as finished goods because we are filling the space. Now here, we select four views. Basic data one, purchasing, storage one, and accounting one. If you want to create a sales view also, not a problem. You can do that as well. Okay. I select my sales view also. But I have a purchasing view here as well. And then we hit enter. And plant 1000 is to location 001, sales of 1000, distribution channel 10. Okay. Make a note of that. Plant one is location 001. Make a note of that. So plant 1000 is location 001. Sales organized 1000 and distribution channel 10. Okay. Then we hit enter. So this is a standard purchasing material. Twenty base unit measure each other group gross weight net weight we enter the sales view sales of data two item category group Standard item. Transportation group, loading group. Now here we have a purchasing group here. Hit enter. Hit enter. And uh, we enter the valuation class. We select the valuation class. Three thousand. Return price ten dollars. And we save. We save it. Material has been created. We hit enter. We create a material. So now we want to create a purchase order. Okay. Here is the material we created. Now we want to create a purchase order. We go to purchase order now. 
the purchase order where is the purchase order so this is purchase order create mv21 app now this is the purchase order screen mv21 and transaction code in the vendor we have to enter the vendor we created so vendor we have created 105 this is the vendor we created so what are the vendor we created we enter it okay hit enter now another thing which you have to do in organization tab so this is organization tab here the purchase organization should be 1000 purchasing group should be 001 company code should be 1000 so whatever you see that means i am creating this purchase order for this purchase organization for this purchasing group for this company code 1000 00 and 1000 then we have a material material is 30797 the material is 30797 9 enter the quantity 100 pieces and then in the bottom you can enter the price you go back and uh, we can select condition type pv00 and then we can enter the price the purchase price this is we are entering purchasing price 100 whatever now one more thing which is we need to do now look at my screen there is a confirmation tab here then we have a confirmation control key in confirmation control key we need to have something called inbound delivery inbound delivery okay inbound delivery this has to be there this tells me that we need to create an inbound delivery for this purchase order so in the confirmation control key this is a confirmation tab and here we have a confirmation control key and here we can enter inbound delivery okay so that is what we can do and then we hit enter we hit, hit enter the stand up you created under the number 45004130 okay. so we get a purchase order we learn how to get a po we make a note of the po and after we create a po and we can enter the purchase order number here then we can create a inbound delivery this we are creating for first time as well so the transaction code is vl31n so we go back and then we hit enter now we go back to logistic execution now we go to inbound process so far we have been going to outbound processing we go to inbound process transaction code vl31n so here for inbound delivery transaction code is vl31n so we go to go to see for inbound delivery inbound delivery create vl31n and we hit enter so here i put a vendor number 10544 i put my purchase order number so this is creation of the inbound delivery we hit enter now this is inbound delivery if i go to stock placement tab i can enter my store location which is to location i'm using so 
I'm using triple zero one. I will put away quantity where is 100 pieces. Okay. Here we can we, we can enter our route. We enter the route and we save it. We have learned how to create a inbound delivery. The shipping notification. Sometimes it says shipping notification, sometimes it says inbound delivery. They are synonymous. We create a inbound delivery. Here it says inbound delivery. We create a inbound delivery. Inbound delivery in SAP is also called advanced shipping notification. You can note that term also or ASN. Now, what is the meaning of that? Is meaning of that basically is that sometimes when uh, we are getting an advanced notification of delivery of the product by the customer, by the vendor, I have a vendor in uh, Vietnam, and vendor in Vietnam sending the material to me, and before they ship the product, and after they ship the product, they send me notification that this material has been shipped. That is called advanced shipping notification, or inbound delivery. In SAP, it is called inbound delivery. Now, after creating inbound delivery, this is inbound delivery. Now, we want to go to transportation. We want to go to VT01N. And the shipment type, I select 001 inbound shipment because material is coming in. So, we're getting inbound shipment. Then we select deliveries. What all delivery I want to include? I can have a one or more than one delivery in it. So I can choose that inbound delivery which I want. So this inbound delivery, hit enter. So inbound delivery has been selected. After that, I go to shipment overview and I can do my planning. So do my MRP, shipment route, so which route it is coming. Copy, check in, loading start, loading end, template completion, template start, end. Now here also, if I want to enter the carrier, which carrier this material is coming in, we have a different carrier. I want to enter what driver number, what driver to tractor, trailer, and we save it. Hit enter. And shipment has been entered. With the message in the bottom shipment 20013 has been checked. So this was an example of inbound shipment. This is coming in. And we see the number also. Yeah? So outbound shipment is start with the number one, and uh, inbound is start with the number two because they're two different document types. There's a document flow. This is shipping notification, and this was the shipment and this. So we have created end-to-end -end process flow. And now we're gonna take 10 minute break. We'll take a 10 minute break and we'll start after 10 minutes, okay? Okay, so I'm back now. Hopefully I will be able to survive another half an hour. Available to promise. And let's talk about that concept. So available to promise basically is a function which happens during sales order processing. So during sales order processing, three things happen. Uh, 
and uh, so at the time of creating sales order system confirms the order availability check yes or no now one more thing before we say in item category in schedule and category in the configuration there is a small check box and that check box should be on <clears throat> if this check box is on then availability check happens okay now what is that basically means is schedule and category so if i go to spro if i go to spro if you would say for reference i am g if i go to um, sales and distribution and uh, we go to basic functions no not basic sales <clears throat> if i go to sales in the sales we have uh, something called sales document and a schedule line on a schedule line there is a small check box that check box should be on so if we go to cp which is a standard item category then we have a uh, this availability check box so this a small uh, box or uh, should be on because of that availability check happens so because of that availability check happens and these are the so now that is what we are seeing here now what happens when we do is schedule line and delivery date if we see here on the sales order there is a schedule line tab <clears throat> no no that's okay i thought yesterday i was quite bad but today i'm okay i can we can do it so here we have a confirmed quantity so on the schedule line tab we have this um, button that is called confirmed quantity okay and uh, so confirmed quantity basically means uh, we have a there is a tab here and on that tab we can confirm we can confirm um we can confirm this date okay <clears throat> so if this quantity if this is confirmed <clears throat> that basically means this sales order is confirmed atp check is passed so if we see this confirmed quantity check uh, field so we, i say order quantity 10 customer ordered me 10 pieces and i confirm 10 pieces if i confirm 10 pieces and order quantity was 10 pieces that basically means my atp check is 100% successful if confirm quantity is not there that basically means atp check didn't succeed means i don't have a material so confirm the quantity in this field tells me whether i have a material or i don't have a material that check box actually decides this and because of this check box we decide and define and determine that 
what kind of a material uh, we have in the system okay. now in the oops, in the standard quantity we have a multiple choices now this uh, um, these uh, as I probably mentioned to you that uh, this ATP check, uh, these uh, screenshots which you see, these are uh, actually several years back. In one of my projects, we did this training. So these slides which you see at this moment, they are from the actual training while working at a project. So a lot of this data and all that DPC and all that, <clears throat> these are actually the actual item code and all that from that customer. So here we have uh, three choices, one-time delivery, uh, delivery, uh, complete delivery. Then we have a delivery proposal, three options. <clears throat> so we see that there's a material called DPC1003. And the description of this material is a fast plate, whatever. So that is what this basically means. Now, what is this basic domain? So we have a, in this plan, ordered, customer has ordered me 1,000 pieces. Okay. Now, so we have one-time delivery. Now in one-time delivery, what happens is I need 1,000 pieces. And then system says, and the customer needs that material on uh, January uh, 25th, 2002. So I was doing this project 18 years back, 2002. So this, I was doing in uh, 18 years back. That was the first project of me in New Jersey. That was my second project in the US. My fourth project overall, 2002, 18 years. So time has passed. So here we have open quantity 1,000 pieces. Now what system says that, okay, I need uh, on January 25th, January 25th, I have only 519 pieces. So 519 pieces. Now system says, this is option one one-time delivery. Whatever date customer needs, on that date we confirm, and then system says, okay, on that date, we have a, you know, 519 pieces. Then we have option number two, which is the date of complete delivery. Okay, so date of complete delivery basically means uh, we can, uh, we can define what kind of, uh, you know, deliveries we can have. The date for complete delivery basically means if you want the entire 1000 pieces, then you have to wait till January 31st. So if you need by 25th, you get 519 only. If you wait till January 31st, then you get the entire quantity that is called date for complete delivery. The third option is the delivery proposals. We're dividing in two. What we are saying is on uh, January 25th, you get 519, and January 31st, you get 418. Okay. So 519 and 418. <clears throat> so, and that is how system determines these two different dates. System determines these two different date. Option one, option two, option three. 
Now this is how all these three options in the sales sorter will look like. So on a schedule and tab, option number one, on January 25th, you get a 519 one item, one line. Option two, the entire quantity of thousand pieces you need. So thousand pieces you need, entire quantity of thousand pieces you will get on January 31st. Option three is divided into two lines. So 519 you get on January 31st and 418, uh, 481 you get on January 31st. So divided into two different schedule lines. Now there is also we have a ATP quantity available to promise quantity. So here what we can do that in available to quantity system, this is the same uh, screen similar to what we saw in MD04. Remember MD04 uh, where we did this? So that is from the sales order, delivery order. So it will reflect in the same. This is that MD04 transaction. Now, this is uh, how the system do ATP check. And when you say 1,000 is available or 500 is available, or whatever quantity is available. So from where system calculate all these different quantities. So in the configuration, we have a something called a scope of check. You see that word, a scope of check. A scope of check basically means when system confirms quantity and tells me I have a 500, I have a 600, I have a 2000, I have 5000. So how it is calculating the quantity? So that basically means if you look at it here, what kind of stocks are included? Do I want to include safety stock? Do I want to include stock in transfer? Do I want to include my quality inspection stock or not? So you have a choice. Then you have a, something called inbound and outbound movement. So do I include my purchase order? I don't have it, but I have a purchase order. So delivery will not come tomorrow. That, do I want to include those purchase orders or not? Do I want to include my purchase requisition or not? Do I want to include my sales orders or not? Do I want to include my deliveries or not? So you have a choice that what kind of a stock type, what kind of different inbound and outbound documents we want to include in our scope of check. So if I go to SPRO, now where is this defined? I'm going to configuration, so I'm in configuration. So here I go to basic functions. In the basic function I have here something called availability check and transfer requirement. And this is availability check. And this is availability check. And here we have a carry out control for availability check. Please make a note of this menu path. Make a note of this menu path. This is where the scope of check is defined. Make a note of it, please. Okay. So I go to carry out availability check. And here, I select my individual requirement. A is for sales order. Then I hit detail button. And then this is what the screen stock overview stock overview, inbound and outbound movement, inbound and outbound movement. So that is what we all see here, okay? Then we hit enter. Now there is another plant, so that basically means ATP check happens at the plant level. So when we do ATP check, so ATP check happens at a plant level. ATP check happens at a plant level. Okay. So, <coughs> so in the plant level, we can 
define different type of option of the plant other plant basically means we can do atp check in a pl different plant what is basically meaning of that is so when system do atp check then atp check happens at a plant level so system does atp check at a plant level and then when item is not confirmed for that then we can go to the next plant we can go to the next plant so what happens if material is not there in the plant a then we also have a choice of confirming the material into another plant okay so that is defining at a plant level that is the scope of it there is also called scheduling of the sales order now scheduling of the sales order we have talked in the beginning of it so remember we talk of the backward scheduling and forward scheduling so that backward scheduling and forward scheduling basically from the delivery date it takes your transportation time out and you know transportation planning and loading picking packing time out and then system calculate availability date because availability date on the date on the basis of which the material should be available because in order to reach the material to the uh, to the customer you need transportation plan time okay it's going to take two days to uh, reach the material then you will also need uh, some time for pick pack load and sending the material so that is the transportation planning loading and all that so that basically means if i have a date of uh, you know 30th i'm going to take two days to transfer the planning so 28 and i'm going if i'm going to take one day for uh, picking packing loading and all that so that basically means three days backward so material should be available on 27 that is called backward scheduling and that is what we talked in the beginning of our conversation and then system calculate availability date and what are the date is that is the date which become the date for kit cleaning available to from so we talked about this like uh, what kind of stock is included So we have a different kind of stock. Do I want safety stock? Do I want inspection stock? Block the stock? What kind of stock I want? So that is what we see. What inventory? Incoming and outgoing movement. So do I want to include purchase order? Do I want to include purchase requisition for that item? If I have a purchase order for that item, should I include that into my calculation? If I purchase requisition for that item, should I include that in my calculation? If I have a sales order delivery for that item, should I include in my calculation or not? that is what we have it here now this is the formula so i would like you guys to make a note of it so how the system calculate atp check so in atp check what system do available to promise what inventory i have what is stock in transfer if you want you can include that is based upon its scope of check minus sales requirement sales requirement means if you have a sales order that is reduced that is minus then we have a delivery if you have a delivery that is reduced if i have a purchase order for that item because purchase order is material coming in we include that purchase order then we have planned order if a material coming in uh, planned order is coming uh, before a production order you can create a planned order if i have a planned order do i want to include that or not if yes then it is added then i can have a production order if do you want to include production order or not yes if yes then production order quantity is added because that is a potential incoming so you can say potential incoming or potential outgoing so that is how system calculate available to products so that is what we saw here difference between confirmed and non confirmed quantity so if i have a in a, in the sales order line item tab if i have there is a confirmed quantity tab if confirmed quantity field is there that means that quantity is confirmed if quantity is blank So that basically means this order is not confirmed, and because the quantity is not confirmed, therefore you cannot create a delivery. You cannot create a delivery document for a sales order which is not yet confirmed. Okay. There is something called replenishment lead time. Make a note of that term called replenishment lead time. It is the estimated constant per material on the plant level in the MRP view. 
in uh, in material master there is mrp view in mrp view we can assign something called replenishment lead time okay so we can define replenishment lead time replenishment lead time is a number of days which you estimate would be required for a material to be able to replenish the material back okay so that is where we call replenishment lead time okay and this is a field in the material master then there is something called checking group checking group is a field in the material master so if you see here there is a checking this is a 02 now what is this 02 this 02 is checking group this is a checking group this checking group is a, is a field in the material master we assign this checking group field in material master and based upon what checking group you have system perform your availability and uh, there is a transfer requirement now transfer requirement basically means in the schedule and category when you get a sales order requirement when you get a sales order that sales order is your demand when you have a demand either you have to produce that material in house or you have to uh, take the material from outside so either make or you buy so that is example of a in house production or external procurement there is also something called backward back order scheduling backward is, is scheduling basically means what so if you go back if you exit out if you exit out so here if you go to sales and distribution if i go to sales and distribution and then we have a sales and uh, you see the back order here and there is a back order rescheduler that is what we see back order rescheduler now what happens in the back order rescheduling basically means many time in the real world if we have many many orders and if these orders are not confirmed then you can reschedule from here so that is the basically meaning of that now i want to do atp exercise i want to do atp exercise so i want to do atp exercise now in atp exercise what i want to do okay in atp exercise so i want to create a material create a material and then create a sales order and verify atp so i want to create a material event 01 create a sales order we are 01 so now we get a material we got a event 01 it enter okay so i get a material it enter so we see data one in soft data one in soft data two and uh, we have a storage one accounting it is done so plan 1000 is location 001 sales on 1000 distribution channel 10 okay.
So this is the material. with ATP check. We select base unit measure, that is group. Cross weight, net weight, it enter, it enter. Now here we have a field called uh, ability check. Click on it. Can we select ability check equals to zero to individual ability check. Then we put a transportation group. In this uh, wholesale sort of this field is different. Loading group. Hit enter. Hit enter. We enter the valuation class. We can enter the price. And then we set it. So material 30798 has been created. So create a material. Now for this material, I want to create a sales order. With execute. So now we create a material. And in this material, we have a ATP check room equals to zero. That was different in this. So make a note of that. Okay. So we have zero two. So we go to zero one, eight enter, regular sales order. Enter the customer. And then I have a material the which we created, hit enter. Okay. Now this system come to this new screen, ability control. So I said, the system telling me that this item in this plant on this date, I need 10 pieces, confirm is zero. I say continue. If I double click on the item, if we go to schedule line, confirm quantity is zero. Because this is a new material, we don't have a stock, so confirm quantity is zero. Order quantity 10, confirm quantity zero. And then we sell it. So 
ਸੋ ਇਹ ਕਿਹੜੇ ਸੇਲ ਸਾਡਾ ਕਿਹੜੇ ਸੇਲ ਸਾਡਾ ਨਾਓ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਅ ਡਿਲੀਵਰੀ ਆਈ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਅ ਡਿਲੀਵਰੀ ਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟ I want to create a delivery document. So I want to go to delivery. Hit enter. Now see the message. No schedule line up to date because system is not able to confirm this order. and because of that system does not give um any confirmation so now what we should do so we try to create delivery not allowed now we have to create a stock we have to create a stock it is stock of material with the transaction code bigo so we go to migo five zero one i enter the quantity one thousand pieces we go to material we enter the material enter the quantity enter the plant store location no hits were found for this material this is the material center it check and hit check so material has been set we posted a material okay. and now we have a stock now after creating this stock now i go to sell sort again so it is stock and change sales order and perform ATP check so here i go to the sales order and here we are available to promise check availability So see the message in the bottom. Check ability carried out. Okay. See what happened. We double click. We go to schedule line. Now the quantity is confirmed because now we have a stock, so system can confirm the quantity. Okay. And we save it. And after getting sales order, now we go to delivery. So we zero one and hit enter. there is no problem you can take delivery with our address okay so thank you for your attention so thanks and done thank you Thank you.